Before I start the review, I would like to thank Namco Bandai. Last month on their live stream, I was one of the five lucky winners of a Tales of Asperia gift bag. Awesome. Okay, so the winner of that is Blade Blur. So congratulations, uh, Blade Blur. I said it right twice. So there you go. Congrats. Woo! You win a bag as well. Considering how extremely gracious and ecstatic I was, there's nothing more I can do to tell you all how great Tales of Vesperia actually is. In the heyday of the Xbox 360, the console struggled to fight footing in Japan. Thankfully, 2008's Tales of Asperia helped moving units and became a bestseller. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to help Microsoft's presence in the West, and its flagship title was even ported to the PlayStation 3. That same PS3 port was endowed with a myriad of extras, and despite the high demand for many fans, it never made it stateside. That is until Namco Bandai shocked everyone during E3 last year with the return of what many consider the best Tales of game in the entire series, Tales of Asteria Definitive Edition. The story follows the adventures of Yuri Lowell, a seasoned warrior who was formerly a knight, who now resides in the lower quarters of Zaffis. When a thief steals the energy source of a fountain in the lower quarters, Yuri decides to go to the castle and fix the issue while stumbling into a young lass named Estelise. She needs his help to find his long last comrade Flynn, so the two team up, along with the cast of colorful characters, to stop the thief, find Flynn, and save the world in the process. And despite the somewhat generic premise of Tales of Asperia, the strength of its narrative lies within its cast. Yuri, for one, is far older than the usual JRPG protagonist, and his snide remarks are a breath of fresh air. Estelle, on the other hand, is naive, curious, and well-meaning. Since the two are opposites of each other, their interactions work well off one another. Other characters are also great, like the sassy Rita, the cool Raven, and I can give you two reasons why I like Judith. Her hair and her weapon, come on guys. The real joy of Vesperia's narrative is seeing how those different personalities play off one another. Even the mini skits are great. Just hearing characters analyze situations in either a serious or comedic manner just add more to their likability. I can't believe I made that kind of mistake! I should have moved right then! Damn it! Somebody shut this old man up. What mistake did you make? Oh, you sweet girl. Thank you for listening. If I'd just met that pretty and hottie before Yuri, the two of us would be off together just... Ha! Yeah! Whoa! Go easy on him, Rita! You got a problem! Uh-uh! The Definitive Edition add two new party members, the aforementioned Flynn and the punitive pirate Patty. While Flynn plays pretty similarly to Yuri, at least Patty plays differently from the rest of the cast, and it does add a new layer to both the narrative and combat. Additionally, there are far more voice scenes in the Definitive Edition than the original 360 release. The entirety of the cast, alongside a few new additions, return to voice their old characters with relative ease with the exception of one glaring omission, Yuri Lowell himself. His old voice actor, Troy Baker, has moved on to become a household in video game performances, and alas, is not part of this release. However, his replacement, Grant George, does a remarkable job capturing the essence of Baker's performance, to the point that two are almost indistinguishable. Hey, fearless leader, you're not supposed to hide right after saying things like that. Look, don't come asking me to take your place when you collapse from exhaustion. However, one of the biggest issues in the Definitive Edition's audio department is the mixing. At times, the sound effects or music will overtake characters' dialogue when they normally shouldn't, making it hard to hear over a conversation. The bottom of the tower looked ancient, but the top is new. It would seem someone built it onto a structure that was already here. Graphically, the game looks pretty similar to how it did 11 years ago. There is a boost in the frame rate, though, especially on the PS4 version since it steadily holds 60 FPS in both battles and towns most of the time. Combat in Tales of Asperia is real-time. Each character can perform a variety of regular attacks as well as special attacks known as arts. There are two categories for arts, powerful strikes or magic spells. 
characters can also go into an overlimit state, which not only allows them to attack faster and stronger, but also activate burst arts that inflict a lot of damage. Lastly, there is also the Fatal Strike mechanic that inflict massive damage upon an enemy that lost its balance. Each character behaves differently. Yuri is a close quarters fighter compared to Rita, who prefers to cast devastating spells from afar. Compositing the best team for each situation is a key for success since the player can only control one character at a time. The other characters can be controlled by the strategy menu to give out specific orders like using a certain amount of items or attacking a specific formation. The combat system is deep and there is a lot of layers to uncover, but it's very easy to get into and is easily the best part of the game. Not to mention you can actually play it with four players total! That's one of the coolest things about the Tales series! Battles can get frantic at times, and instructing other characters to use specific item or spell in the heat of a battle can lead to frustration if not done at the exact right moment. This especially became maddening during the boss battles, which is probably the game's biggest issue. The first and third bosses in particular are notoriously difficult, to the point that a lot of grinding is required to even stand a chance. Ironically, all the regular battles are so easy, don't even get to perform all the special moves you learn in the game, which is kind of a shame. But at the end of the day, those are my only complaints. There's a really good reason why people have been waiting for Tales of Asperia the Definitive Edition. Namco Bandai didn't just bring out an old game from more than a decade ago, they downright improved it. Two new characters, new arts to perform, voice cutscenes, it all adds to an amazing package. It is easy to pick up, and the best part, you can have three friends join you in the adventure. If you haven't played a Tales game before, this is an excellent starting point. Thank you very much for watching, like and subscribe, and of course, take care. Come on, let's leave our philosopher behind and get a move on. Listen to what I've got to say! So you mean we're lost in the forest of life? Oh, so you get what I'm saying. Before we find our way out of the forest of life, we need to find our way out of this one. I'll lead. I have found direction in this life more times than... Hey, wait! I'm not done yet!